um, Walter Longo's fasting mimicking diet. And that's when the first time I heard about longevity and then started like, Ooh, what is this? Um, how can I be healthier, you know, have a completely healthy uh, lifespan. So, um, you know, eventually found David Sinclair and then I learned about synolytics, which again, I thought, Oh, that sounds like, you know, detoxing zombie cells, detoxing, uh, let's do that. You know, that sounds interesting. So, uh, that led me to, I don't, I'm going to maybe mispronounce this fisetin. That, yeah. So, um, and I started researching that and when in the process of researching that, I, um, learned about this company called Novos, it's, you know, um, and the product, when I researched their product and all the different um, ingredients, I was like, oh, these are other things I'm reading about, you know, glycine and rhodiola. And I was already taking magnesium. So you take the capsule is NMN and the powder is like a mix of um, uh, different nutraceuticals. So, yeah. And, and again, I just want to tell everyone out there, like, I don't work for them. I don't influence for them. I don't, you know, receive like, you know, I just, I just want to, <laughs> they're not paying for this podcast. I just want to be very clear because I think when something's really good, it's, I think people should know about it. And um, so they they were kind of a startup at the time. And so when I um, was ordering it, they asked if I wanted to be part of a study. And um, so that's kind of how I got found my way to the Rejuvenation Olympics, because they said, well, as part of the study, we're going to, you know, take your blood and take a look at I, I honestly at the time didn't understand what they were me measuring. So at month six, um, it had they gave me both both scores. And then that's when they asked me if I wanted to be uploaded into the rejuvenation Olympics. And then we continued for another six months. So, um, gosh, let's see. I kind of switching it up just recently, but what it's been for a long time is I don't usually eat until about 10. So I usually get up and work out first thing in the morning and I don't usually eat until about 10. Um, and that is usually greens. Like, like I just do kind of some kind of powdered green drink first, something like that. Sometimes I add some, um, maca to it. Um, I was doing a lot of moringa at two, um, but I think it was messing with my thyroid. So I've kind of, I'm just taking a little break. I was also doing like a whole tablespoon a day and with lemon and greens and I was just having some sluggish issues. And yeah. I thought, oh, I think this might be messing with my thyroid. Exactly. So I thought, oh, I'll just take a break, but I'll, I'll go back to it. I think it's a, a good product, but at any rate, um, yeah. And then at some point a little bit later than that, after I've kind of digested that I'll go and make either, um, a concoction, <laughs> as we would call them a green latte. Um, and in the winter at least. So that's usually like bone broth greens and, um, it's a great recipe. Actually, there is a, a doctor out there, um, Kara Fitzgerald, and she wrote a program called Younger You. Yeah. And she has a better broths and healing stews or something. I, I'm going to miss, we'll get it in the show notes, the name of it, because she's got a, a sweet latte in there. And I swear, it's just like, every time I make it, I'm like, this is a cup of Christmas. I could just like drink it every day, which I do, you know, here it gets hot in the summer. So like right now we're just in that shift, you know, where it's getting warmer. And I, the last thing I want to do is have a hot latte. So, um, I start making smoothies I made a smoothie yesterday. So it's pretty much the same stuff. It's just mixed up with frozen fruit, um, still some greens. And I cook my greens again, worrying about those goitrogens. So I cook all the greens ahead of time and then, uh, just put a little bit and it's really easy to get like, so I'll put about four ounces of greens in there and that's like nothing. Um, so, uh, so that's the morning. And I've been postmenopausal for a long time. Unfortunately, I probably hit that a bit early too. So, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it felt early. Yeah, exactly. And then that's kind of the thing I'm sort of changing up a little now. Um, because, and we'll get into this, but I'm you know, trying to get whatever the hundred grams of protein a day. And, and it, I just quite frankly find it very hard to, if I have that short window to get that much. So I'm sort of looking at maybe I should, you know, start like just having a protein shake or something right after the workout that would just add another 20, 30 grams of protein quite easily without, you know, messing things up too much. Yeah. So I'm 130 pounds. So I know I'm supposed to be shooting for 130, but I'm like, it just feels impossible. Back to the diet. Um, noon, I go downstairs and I'll grab a bowl of vegetables and that's anywhere from six to 10 ounces of veggies. Cause again, this goes back to the paleo days. I don't know if you ever remember, um, that book, Well Fed. I can't remember the, the author's name, but such a great cookbook. And she was always talking about, you know, you gotta eat your veggies. You gotta eat your veggies. And I thought, yeah, she's right. You gotta eat your veggies. So I just kind of started doing that 
then. And I became kind of addicted to celery and other things. Um, and then also just some source of protein. So some days I'm just cooking up chicken breasts, which quite honestly get, you know, old after a while. So maybe it's just, um, I hate to say it, but some cheese sometimes for the calcium. Other times it's just something left over from the night before, but kind of focusing more on the protein. Um, not so much carbs at that point. Yeah. And, it's, and sometimes it's just a bowl of, um, what is it? A goat milk yogurt. I seem to, the regular, you know, yogurt doesn't, the cow's milk, I don't know. It's just not working for me these days. And uh, it's tend to get a little backed up. <laughs> yeah, so, and I love, I love the flavor of it. So that might be my protein. And then I don't eat again until about five thirty, six o'clock when I make dinner. And that is like a mixed bag because I've got a teenager and I want us to, you know, have a dinner that both of us will enjoy. So, you know, some days that's pizza, some days that's pasta. Not a lot. We don't do a lot of pasta in this house, but, uh, but it's, I'm always finding something I love, love, love to cook. So, um, yeah, I just kind of yeah. make it, healthy. I mean, we even fry food. I mean, I just use healthy oils and I've even rendered my own beef tallow, which I wouldn't recommend. It stinks really badly. <laughs> but anyway, we make, but I should back up like, you know, so I, I'm really strict five days a week. Very, very strict. And I learned this from my Italian friends. I used, I used to live in Dubai and I had this Italian friend who was older than me and looked much younger than me, believe it or not. And I just thought, my God, what are you doing? And, you know, it was like, just, she was very careful. There was a lot of fasting. She was very careful during the week. And then it was the weekends. Enjoy, you know, have a, have a nice dinner with your family, but have a little less on the weekdays. And then on the weekends, kind of enjoy yourself. And I don't go eating a box of donuts or anything like that by enjoying, but you know, like a couple weekends ago, we made cinnamon rolls, you know, but I try to make it myself. We don't go, I don't like Krispy Kreme. I don't like, you know, kind of I don't like even like my son doesn't really even like the taste of like fast food. I mean, in and out burger. Yes. But the rest, no. Um, and so then I don't really eat much after that. Like sometimes I have some berries. Like last night I had blueberries. I was craving some, I knew we had jelly beans in the house because we're going to have Easter here soon. So I was like, Oh, I want some of those, but I thought, no, I'm going to keep the sugar to a minimum. I'm noticing with menopause, like I just can't seem to have sugar at night. It really causes some hot flashes and, and things. So I just, in fact, I've been using your, um, what is the, uh, the apple cider, apple cider vinegar. Um, so like if I eat kind of a little too late, I, I had heard about it. I think it was in your book or one of your podcasts or boundless. I can't remember, but I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to try this. And sure enough, it was like <sighs> sleep like a champ because I didn't, my blood sugar wasn't going so high, you know? Yeah. So, if, you know, as part of my work, when I had the heavy metals and, and things, so I had learned, I've pretty much chronically deficient in magnesium. And I don't know, maybe that's in my genetics. I have no idea. Or maybe that's just what everybody is. But so I have been taking magnesium for years. I mean, something like I'm trying to think it must be like four to 600 milligrams a day, you know, throughout the day. Um, fish oil, I've always been taking ever since my 40s and vitamin D3K2 as well. Um, those and a, and a B complex, like I've been taking that for you know, over a decade, 15 years now. So long before I started Novo. So I, maybe that's where the, you know, 75, the score of 75% came from. I don't know. I would be doing those whether, like, I'm not doing that for longevity. I'm doing that. So I literally just can, you know, function. I mean, if I don't have the magnesium, I just I start crashing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't take, I, I experimented with creatine and had like half my hair fall out. So and I know people say it doesn't do that, but it definitely like, it was not, it was not a good experience for me hair wise. Yeah. So that's, you know, it was magnesium, vitamin D3, fish oil, B complex. That's what I've been taking for, you know, pretty much decades. Then I added the Novos and their, you know, their core and their boost. So the Novos core is people can look up what's in there, but, and then, um, the boost is NMN, um, before, um, at one, at some point before Novos, I was experimenting with NR and I just, I did it for a little bit and I felt pretty good, but, um, then I quickly switched to Novos and start, started taking their NMN. Um, and then, but I've kind of pulled the NM out and I'm experimenting with NR again. And I hate to, cause I know there's a big debate about this, but I think I feel better on NR than I do NMN. And for me, it was like, it, it's not like, I want people to know this, like, it's not like you are like, woo, I have a ton of energy. Like I just drank like 10 cups of coffee or anything like that. It's just that it like almost raises the floor. So say like the first six months of that, the Novos test, I was in a 
yet again, a very, very stressful period. I mean, I hate to say it, but almost the parent's worst nightmare. And um, so the only thing I was doing, and I think that's what people should know, is this magnesium D3 fish oil, B-complex always, and the Novos. My workouts were haphazard. I was barely meditating. I was definitely not sleeping. I mean, there were, I would go three days without sleep. But that's when I noticed, like, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't so tired, you know, like before I would like lose one night of sleep and I couldn't function the next day. You know, here I'm going three days because of stress and everything. Um, I, it's like that floor was raised and I just notice with NR, it's like raises that floor a little bit higher than NMN. Again, that, that's somewhat subjective, but that's how it feels. I, and I've been like that my whole life. I mean, again, being a swimmer, you got to be in the pool for practice at 5 a.m. So even like in high school, it's like, you know, nobody had told me to go to bed. I was in bed and asleep by 9, 9 p.m. every night. Um, not that I didn't go out on the weekends, but, you know, so, um, so the, and I've just always been pretty careful about eight hours of sleep. I think I learned that from my dad and I just kind of have safeguarded it pretty much my whole life. Um, I mean, I go out and have fun and everything, but it was like, got to get your eight. So now I, you know, I wear like a mask. I can't seem to, I can't black out my room enough just given our house, but, uh, I, I wear a sleep mask. I do the mouth tape. I make sure I'm for the most part in bed by nine. Again, having a teenager that makes it kind of hard, but, um, in bed by nine and then I'm probably lights out by nine fifteen, nine thirty, 30. And my alarm is set for five, five fifteen. That is interesting because it makes sense. Cause last night I was like going to sleep and I realized I'm like, I couldn't really like you know, just turn it on. I realized, oh, I didn't put my mask on. <laughs> you know, put it on yeah. right, right to sleep. So yeah, there's got to yeah. be something to that. So I had, ex I, I don't want to say I experimented with HBOT, but um, my son, when he was kind of going through things, we, we learned he had a like a TBI when he was a baby. So we were working on that with him. So we had, uh, you know, giving him HBOT sessions. And I thought, oh, let me try that. But I've, only, I've done a few sessions. It, it was cool. I mean, I'd love to like have one in my house and just do my daily meditation on that. But um, so yeah, I don't, I don't do any of the light or any of that kind of stuff. Not some days I swim, but I don't know. I just like swimming is so boring. I mean, I feel like I'm convinced I'm good at math because of swimming. Cause I'd sit there and go, oh, I've got 20 laps. I got to do 40. Okay. That's half, you know what I mean? So they're like, sit there and do all the math in my head as I'm swimming. Anyway. Um, so no, I don't do that anymore. I just, I like going to the gym, but I really don't love working out. <laughs> I just, I like going for the sauna. So I joined the gym for the sauna and I usually wake up in the morning thinking, ah, I'm not going to do my workout. I'm just going to go. I'm going to have a sauna and that'll be kind of my, you know, cardiovascular for the day. But as soon as I walk in, I'm like, okay, you got to do like one set of something. So, so my routine is usually, um, Mondays, I kind of switched it up since the fortune article and I'm always kind of experimenting, try like I kind of switch it up either between six months or 12 months. Um, so now I'm doing um, a full body workout. Let's see, Monday is actually VO2 max because I figure I kind of got a lot of back to my dad, like glycogen in my muscles from eating, you know, extra stuff over the weekend. So Monday, first thing I do the VO2 max and I do a Norwegian four by four. Yeah. I actually, I think do three, I do three minutes easy, four minutes hard. I do that four times through and then just two minutes really easy. Um, and then, um, I'll see Monday and Monday is usually like abs as well. So I'll do those two. Then I jump in the sauna. Then I take a cold shower and people have asked me this. So I'll, I'll mention it. My cold shower is as cold as I can get it in Arizona, which in the winter is actually cold. And it's about four to five solid minutes. Um, and I wash my hair. I do, I do everything I'm supposed to do in the shower, you know, but just in the cold. And, um, and most days I don't want to do it, but it feels really good once, you know, it's like a natural antidepressant, uh, for sure. Um, that, I don't know. It's like a dopamine curve apparently that lasts pretty long. So, so yeah. Um, so that's Monday, Tuesday is a full body workout. It varies. So like that Norwegian four by four, I mean, I'm, that's 35 minutes, 30 minutes for that five minutes for abs. And my, I stretch too. Um, some days I forget, but um, stretch. And then the sauna is 30 minutes and showers five minutes. Yeah. 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 On Monday. So Tuesday I do a full body weight workout and I do Tuesdays with free weights and I do it at a different gym that doesn't have a sauna. So, um, we've got like a gym in my neighborhood and it's just a little less crowded. It's easier to kind of get everything done. They've got, you know, all the equipment. So, um, I do a full body that, and that probably takes me a solid hour, but I'm doing, you know, step ups and all kinds of other things to 
so I don't have to do cardio on top of the, uh, the weights. Um, and I'm just messing around with all kinds of different stuff every day. You know, I don't really have any routine except for to just, you know, get the upper body really well, get the lower body. And I try to just kind of mix it up. So, um, and that's, so that's Tuesday. And then Wednesday is just like abs. And, um, I do just like a zone two cardio and it just depends on when my first meeting is that day. So sometimes it's a 20 minutes, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's 45. Um, and I'm always working out on either a step mill or I sometimes use an elliptical trainer. Yeah. I haven't tried the ketones yet. It sounds really interesting. I, I, I do, I am experimenting with pre-workout. My son kind of got me into this. So I've been using this, of course, like he wanted to get the kind of unhealthy pre-workout. I'm like, no, 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 we're getting the healthy stuff, you know? So <laughs> ordered, ordered something from like a nutraceutical company. I don't know. Anyway, um, we didn't really talk about it, but like my morning routine, I do get up in the morning and um, drink green tea and pray. That's kind of my, you know, quiet time, but I don't drink coffee. I don't, I, just cannot have a lot of caffeine. So, um, when I do pre-workout, I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> you know, like, um, so the VO two max day, I'll take a pre-workout and then, uh, Monday and Tuesday, basically uh, pre-workout and then sometimes on Saturday. So, okay. So let's go back. So Monday V uh, VO two max Tuesday, full body workout Wednesday, just kind of zone two cardio Thursday is, um, zone two cardio Somewhere between Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, I'll do another full body workout, but I'm in the gym and I'm using like all the machines, you know, just things that kind of, I don't know, li honestly limit your range of motion, you know, different. So, mm -hmm. um, um, and that's not as intense, but I definitely like enjoy the leg presses and various things that they have there. So I'm doing another full body workout either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Lately, it's been Saturday because my son okay. likes to go with me and he works out. So, and I'll do pre-workout with that one as well. But the others, so Thursday, um, Friday, I'll do like zone two cardio and then nothing on, um, on Sunday. I've been getting into ruck. I've been getting into this rucking. I was like, and I don't really have like the ruck sack or anything like that, but I did. I just grabbed my backpack and I have this old cookbook from like 1977, which is like, you know, this old gourmet. It's like basically a year's worth of magazines in one book. So I put that in there. I think it weighs like seven pounds. And then last weekend I put in like another, but so yeah, I'll just go for a walk or like the weather's like beautiful here and the hiking is like gorgeous. So I go out hiking. It just depends on how much time I have and what's going on. Morbid, but uh, so no, my goal is just to be as happy and healthy and mobile and vital for as many years um, as I live on the planet. And, um, you know, and